remember John Steinbeck also had this x-ray vision when it came to human nature. He could put in a couple of paragraphs something that's so deeply rooted that uh, you wonder sometimes where he got the material from. This is a little excerpt from Canary Row again. And it's simply an animal, it's a, it's a story that poses as an animal story, but it's really about us, our hopes and our aspirations. And it's simply called The Gopher. Once, a long, long time ago, near a thriving little village, there was a well-grown gopher who took up residence in a thicket of mallow weeds. It was the perfect place. The deep green luscious mallows of their towered crisp and rich. And as they matured, their little cheese has hung down provocatively. The earth, or the earth was perfect. It was black and soft, and it had some clay in it so it would crumble. The gopher. The gopher was fat and sleek, and he always had plenty of food in his cheap pouches. His little ears were clean and well set. His eyes were black as old-fashioned pinheads. His digging hands were strong. The fur on his back was glossy brown. The fur on his chest was incredibly soft and rich. He had long, curving teeth and a little short tail. And altogether, he was a beautiful gopher, and he was in the prime of his life. He had come to this place over land, and he had found it good. And when he began his burrow, it was on a little eminence so that he could look out from among the mallow weeds and he could watch the village life go by. And when he dug down into that cold black earth, he found that it was even more perfect, for there were great rocks under the soil so that the tunnels would never cave in, no matter how hard it rained. It was a place where he could start up any number of families and the burrow could increase in all directions. It was beautiful there in the early morning. The first rays of the rising sun shone down upon him in his hole, and he lay there contented and very, very comfortable. And when he had dug his great chamber and his four emergency exits and his waterproof deluge room, the gopher began to store food. He cut out only the perfect mallow stems. He trimmed them to the exact length he would need and he took them down the tunnel and into his great chamber and he stacked them and arranged them so that they would not ferment or get sour. He had found the perfect place to live. And so the gopher worked and worked and worked until he had his great chamber crammed with food. And then he began to dig the little side chambers for the babies who would inhabit them. And within a few years, or there might be thousands of his progeny spreading out from this original hearthstone. But as time went by, the gopher began to be a little impatient. For you see, no female appeared. And so he sat at the entrance of his burrow in the morning, and he made penetrating little squeaks that are inaudible to the human ear, but can be heard deep in the earth by other gophers. And still, no female appeared. And finally, in a sweat of impatience, he went up and across the track until he found another gopher hole. And he sat and squeaked provocatively in the entrance. He heard a rustling and then he smelled female. And then, out of the hole, there came an old, battle-torn bull gopher, and he mauled him and bit him so badly that he crept home and lay in his great chamber for three days recovering. And he had lost two toes from one front paw from that fight. And again, he sat and he waited, and he waited, and he squeaked beside his beautiful burrow, in that beautiful place. But no female ever came. 
And after a time, he had to move away. You see, he had to move two blocks up a hill to a dahlia garden. And there, there they put up the traps every night. 